Why? Well, don't worry, just want to fly. <laughs> She'll probably die. I don't know why we opened like that. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Welcome to another PlayStation Education. Today we're going to talk about a topic that's very close to my heart, but something that you've never experienced. Apparently not. Um, it's the idea of PlayStation Plus guilt. Now, for those of you who don't know what PlayStation Plus is, it's a monthly subscription. Uh, it's, you, can, you can pay it in increments of... Uh, I think it's five dollars a month, or you can buy a year for fifty bucks. Obviously, save yourself some ten bucks. Um, I've been subscribed to it for about a year and a half now, and uh, I've gotten well over six hundred plus, no, six hundred dollars plus of uh, free games. I had another two hundred or three hundred dollars worth of discounts. Uh, some of those I've actually used. It's a very, it's a very, very good program. Very nice, especially for the the mid tier games. Those kind of games where you're like, ah, I would like to try that out, but I don't know, and you kind of forget about them. Yeah. Six months later, P PS Plus is like, oh, by the way, this game is free. Here, here you go. <laughs> it's it's a great program. Um, it's a great program that keeps on paying in dividends, as it, as it were. Yeah. Uh, but there is a an unusual problem that has risen from it. Uh, there was a franchise that I really overlooked when it first came out called Infamous. Now, uh, that's on our docket for PlayStation Education, where we'll get to those hopefully after we get done with the uh, the Night Dog games and some of the indie games. Right. Uh, that's kind of a future future game. Uh, August time. It was an open world superhero game, where the idea was that you were a reluctant superhero named Cole McGrath, who got these elect electronic based, electric based uh, superpowers. It was an open world game, you can add different quests and you just go around and um, I don't know why, but it never sparked with me. I don't know. If it was, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know if it was because I, when I think of open world games, I like to think of customization and stuff like that. And obviously, this didn't have any. Um, I know I didn't know enough about the character, and uh, I love Cole McGrath now as a character, but at the time, it was bald white guy, and it was like, bald oh, guy. bald white guy. Oh, you mean the the the, the, attack, the uh, protagonist of ninety nine percent of video games? Oh, that's just great. Um, so it didn't really appeal to me. Well. A little bit later, uh, there's something that happened to the PSN. They had a PSN hack, and all the all the accounts went down. And as a reward to those who stayed with PSN after that happened, Sony gave out a handful of free games, and one of them was the first Infamous. So I downloaded it, I played it, and I loved it. Uh, but of course, it was a game I got for free. Now, when Infamous 2 rolled around, um, I also kind of ignored it. It was already out at this point. Yeah. And I didn't go out and buy it right away. And then, not even a few months after that, it became free on PlayStation Plus. And I played it. I adored it. I I, I, strong, I strongly hold that uh, Infamous 2 is better than Infamous 1 for nothing else because uh, the production values and the stories is, uh, is better told. But they were great games, exceptional games. They are games that if I had paid the full $60 now, even four or five years after they were released, it would still be worth it. They were just great games. And I played them for free. <laughs> Um, obviously, I, I technically did pay for them. I paid for PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Uh, well, then they had a piece of DLC. It was a little little uh, enclosed story. It was you know, only a couple hours long. But it was supposed to take place on Halloween night. And it was like this little um, a vampire spin-off story that one of the main characters, Zeke, was telling to try to pick up on a girl at a bar. <laughs> and it was really funny. It was really tongue-in-cheek. That was $10. I also didn't go out and buy it right away. PlayStation Plus gave it to me for only $2.50. So this series that I poured a good maybe 70 hours into, I've only paid $2.50 to enjoy. And part of, me, part of me is like, okay, well, I paid for the service. Yeah. This was a benefit of the service. I shouldn't feel bad. But another part of me is like, I love these games. I would love to see more. As uh, you, you saw from the PlayStation 4 announcement, uh, they have a new Infamous coming out. In fact, it's going to come out uh, the first quarter of next year. Um, right now, the, the rumor is sometime in February. It looks amazing. It looks great. I'm very excited for it. But uh, again, there's this idea that this is a franchise I've enjoyed a lot, but I haven't financially backed that enjoyment. But if I were to go out and buy the games right now, uh, that's kind of 
foolish. I've already played them. I've already enjoyed them. I paid for the service. You know, it was a benefit of the service. Why do I feel guilty? Why do what I? Why do I feel like I've gotten way more out of it than I put into it? And this is just one of those one of those uh, things with the PlayStation Plus. When I download these games and I play these games, do they at Sony know how much I enjoyed them? Yeah. Because when when a game's on a PlayStation Plus, when people download and play it. Do they see that as, oh, here's potential interest in this franchise, franchise, or have they already written it off as a loss? That's why they're giving it for free. And, uh, I don't know, there's, there's something about that that's just slightly heartbreaking to me, to think that um, this franchise that I love and I enjoy, that because I haven't financially backed it, um, that this, this new game probably took a, a lot of coaxing in order to create. And so now for this next one, I'm definitely going to buy it day one, I'm definitely going to support it. But it's something you really don't uh, I've, I've never really thought about it in that way before. You know, this is a capitalistic system, and I, ho so I wholeheartedly support that. But then we have to speak with our wallets. And so um, that's one franchise I've loved that I haven't quite expressed that love monetarily. And I hope to rectify that with the, the next games that comes out. So uh, I know this was a very one-sided conversation. I apologize for that. That's all right. I enjoy <laughs> listening. Um, uh, again, as, as you come up with topics, um, in anything, especially if it's something exclusive to or inherent to the 360 ecosystem, I really want to hear about it again because I'm just from that different ecosystem. Yeah. Um, and this is PlayStation education, but that's the important thing about education is it, it goes both ways. We learn from each other. So um, uh, if you have anything... Uh, anything, any thoughts, anything to add? No. I mean, like, I think you figured out the guilt thing pretty, you know, I mean, that was kind of obvious in the sense that, um, you got it for free, mm -hmm. in, in a way. Yeah. And, you know, you're like, well, I did pay for something. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you weren't backing the, um, company, if yes. it were. So, I mean, if they, you know, they look at the sales and everything, you know, a lot of people play the game, but if there's a lot of people like you who just waited and got it downloaded, mm -hmm. then, yeah, it doesn't look like people are backing the company. Yes, yes. So I understand the whole guilty feeling thing. Of course, I want to feel because I can't like, yeah, free game. Free game. Free game. Those game. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a joke. <laughs> sp sp speaking of which, out of those, out of those six hundred plus dollars of free games, I've gotten through not even a fifth of them. So that's that's a that's another idea. That's the opposite spectrum of PlayStation Plus guilt, where I feel like I'm I'm getting more than my money's worth out of some franchise and other ones where I'm like, oh man, do I really want to play this forty hour game that I got for free? I don't have time, but I got it. I should really play it. I've already paid for it, technically. So, Darksiders, I'm looking at you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so uh, this has been a great conversation. So now, this next generation, um, I know the internet's sketchy where you live, but yes. um, if uh, on those occasions where internet does work properly, I highly recommend PlayStation Plus, especially if you want to play stuff like Destiny together in the future. Um, it's definitely a franchise I'm very much looking forward to. I think that'd be a great way for us to, to stay connected in this coming generation. Anyways, uh, this has been your PlayStation Education. Join us next time. Make sure to have your, your thinking caps at the ready. Make sure to have your little, your little notebook, little notepad, and uh, prepare to have your mind expanded. Almost blown, but not exactly. <laughs> Almost blown, but not exactly. Never good. Bye, you guys later. Bye. Kablam!